Hi, I'm Nick Beckenbush. I'm a PhD student here at Binghamton, and this is our control unit for our vacuum chamber. Uh, here we see the pressure for our preparation chamber, and this controls the pressure and everything, this control unit, and this here shows the pressure in our load lock. So what we're going to do now is start the rotary pump to pump it down to a rough vacuum, and then the turbo is going to kick on after. So this is our sample preparation chamber here. And this is a, a gate valve that locks it off from, this is our load lock here. We try to keep pressure below uh, 1 times 10 to the minus 9 millibar. And we have a bunch of different things on this. Here's our mass spectrometer. Here's our Kelvin probe down here. And in the back, we have a sputter gun to clean the surface of our samples. And that whole thing. Uh, is our transfer arm that goes inside and moves our sample around. And that could also do heating. Uh, hello, my name is Sean Salas and I work with Dr. Lewis Piper. I'm a PhD student in the Material Science program. And uh, over here we've been uh, taking some data from our XPS machine. This is kind of what it looks like in this raw form before we analyze it. Uh, each one of these little graphs is a, a specific region corresponding to a specific element. We have like carbon, gallium, indium, uh, oxygen, and zinc. And here we have the balance band where we can uh, probe the uh, VVM of our sample. And so I've just finished this scan and now I'm going to uh, move on to doing more scans and we're going to move the sample to a different angle, which will allow us to get a kind of a depth profile from our sample just by changing what angle the x-rays come in at. What can this tell us? Well, as I mentioned, we use this for chemical analysis. So often we're looking at new materials and we want to make sure that A, we've grown it correctly. Two, we're interested in how we can relate the changes in composition with uh, performance in the device. So that may depend on how much uh, conductivity the material has. Because of the nature of the energy of the x-rays and the UV light we send in, the photoelectrons that we measure will typically come from the topmost layers. And as a result, our composition we get is from near the surface. And that can be very different to the bulk. And the surface uh, plays an important role in devices. So even if it's a well-standard material that we consider that we know well, like zinc oxide, its surface properties can be very different to that in the bulk. So this is a powerful tool for this.